All right, we're going to go ahead and get started with our regular meeting for uh, Monday, December 8th, 2014, 7 p.m. Roll the roll. Mr. Dawson. Here. Mr. Haberman. Here. Mr. Harding. Here. Mrs. Ellis. Here. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rice. Mr. Rice is excused. He had a business trip out of town. <clears throat> right, tonight we've got some special guests. They were all caught doing something good this month at the elementary school. So they're going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Before they do that, they're going to introduce themselves.
All right, once again, I'd like to congratulate our VES students of the month. It's always fun to uh, hear what they want to do when they grow up and hear the introductions. Um, with that, we will move on to item number five, which is our student liaison update with Mr. Abramill. Okay, tonight we've got uh, Ms. Jessen and Mrs. Reedy to, from the high school to do a presentation on an outdoor classroom. so much of a presentation as Mrs. Reedy and I would like to address the board because we are interested in writing a couple of grants in order to be able to design an outdoor classroom on some property that is already owned by the district. So Mrs. Reedy is just going to talk to you a little bit about what we, why we're doing what we're doing. We'd like to be able to use the property just right. east of the parking lot by the football stadium. We sort of use it now informally on and off, but we'd like to kind of make it more of a formal outdoor classroom for a number of reasons, um, but particularly so that we can get our kids out and be amongst nature. It's really important that they're able to do that and connect to what's going on outside and to have those interactions and see how those interdisciplines come together. We were outside today just for a little while making our own little body farm on the side of the building. So if you go over there, that's what that is over there. And we were hoping that when we did our classroom that we would be able to do that also. And one thing that I noticed is when our kids were there, we went from it being, oh, these are just rats, to after we had everything all prepped and to put out there, the students had come to come full circle and they were very worried about what are we going to do when this is over? How are we going to be able to take our corpses after they all decay and be able to dispose of them in a way that was respectful for them? And I thought that is something that I would have never thought would have come out of this lesson, but it was something that we could see more often if we get the kids out in nature. And a lot of our students don't have the opportunity to be able to do that. We also saw that type of thing when we were over at Stone Lab where the kids are working outside and they, by the end of the time, they have such a respect for the area and the resources that they were working with, and to see them actively engaged was absolutely wonderful. When you get kids outside of the classroom, some of those kids though, that don't normally excel in our traditional classrooms, they get out there and they just blossom. They're able to be hands-on, it's engaging to them, it's interactive for them, it's things that they can understand and that they can see happen in front of them. Even with that said, the kids who have figured out what our education system is and they excel inside our classrooms, it just gives them another way to learn, to become a more versatile learner in that respect. So I think there's a lot of good, solid reasons for us to be able to make that much more of a formal classroom. We were thinking about getting some benches out there, having a sign, have the kids go out and actually identify the things. We had Davies Tree Service come in and talk to all of our students about um, invasive species in the area and that type of thing and some of the careers that go along with that. And I was thinking as I was coming up here, how powerful would that have been for us to have our kids outside in their outdoor classroom listening to that while he was showing them and you know, being able to connect with what all of that is. And finally, I mean, I think one of the biggest things is we, our responsibility is to make good citizens out of our, stu our, our students. And for them to be able to have respect for the resources that are around them is going to do nothing but make them better citizens and, and kind of open up their world outside of that, you know, 16-year-old um, teenage human beings only being the people that occupy this earth that we live on. So. so what we have in mind is to take that woodlot, which already has some existing pathways through it, and improve upon that space. So widen some of the pathways, get them set with mulch so that they're passable. You know, at different times of year, they're real muddy or what have you. Um, we'd also like to get some marker signs that you might see at like an arboretum for some of the wildflowers that are out there, some of the invasive species that are out there. We'd like to do some signage at the entrances to that area that denotes it as Vermilion Local Schools property 
and encourage people to, you know, take nothing from the space and not to leave trash and have some trash containers. Um, we'd like to incorporate into that space Mrs. Rainey's body farm, if you will, sort of at the edge of that property so that you can get the various limiting factors of light and sun, et cetera, and temperature on both sides of, of that area. Um, we had previously been using the space that was at the south end of that lot um, with all of our classes for lessons on the process of succession. But of course, that space now will be used by the field house. So we would like to have sort of an area that we can manage and maintain. And before we started writing grants to get money to do that, we wanted to make sure that it was okay with the Board of Ed if we actually did use it. So. It's a great idea. I think it's a fantastic idea. You're talking the woods. Correct. Okay. Between Sanford and Parkland. Yeah. Are the woods all ours? How deep are and, and that's something that we have to investigate, but we so you look consider. Into that like that, it goes all the way back to the fence and the property lines to the Sanford, and I don't know the street behind it. You can see it on the yes. lines here. Do we go to the east side of the woods behind those houses? Do we own yes. yes, all the way to the property lines. Okay. Yeah. So that's something that we wanted to move forward on <clears throat> if we could have permission to do so. So, so there's paths back there already for cross country. Right. right. And the plan would be to leave the cross country as it is. Well, there's sort of unimproved paths yes. that just have been worn by use. I know that the cross country team does use them for that purpose, but um, the idea would be to make them more passable with, um, you know, we have to investigate what all the possibilities are, but sort of our vision was like a wood chip mulch sort of thing such that, you know, it, particularly in a low area where it might get real muddy at a certain time right here, that wouldn't be so much of an issue. So all the trees are planning on leaving the trees though as they are right clearing okay. trees. no that that's not I mean we certainly don't want to remove trees that's not the idea right um there are some areas where poison ivy comes right out into the path so things like that you know you want to make it useful and safe for kids at the same time well just just check with Mr. Burke to make sure there's not some weird cross-country regulation that you can't run over the one shot mm -hmm. you never know right mm -hmm. that's a great idea though um, yeah I think it's outstanding Thank you for uh, linking out of the box and getting the kids out to experience something different. Do you need anything else from us? Just um, I just we just needed to get a go ahead, start you know investigating and doing some research, writing grants and so forth. So go. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> anything else, Mr. Abelman? That's it. Thank you. Um, legislative update, Mr. Hardy does not have anything for us this evening. True? Okay. With that, we are going to move on to item number seven. It's uh, going to be a quick executive session. I'd like to recommend a resolution moving to executive session for the purpose of consultation. The board's attorney to discuss matters which are subject of pending or imminent court action. I'll move. A second. Call the roll. Mrs. Evans? Yes. Mr. Dawson? Yes. Mr. Haberman? Yes. Mr. Harding? Yes. 7.15, or 7.12, I'm sorry. 7.12. Okay. We will move on to item number eight, which is public participation. Is there anybody that wishes to speak? quite a while, even while I was teaching, that gossip 
is our number one problem. Stories get out there that half truth or not truth at all, and it suddenly becomes gospel. But unfortunately, the kids, the staff, you people, uh, oftentimes get blamed for that, and it's not your fault. Absolutely not your fault. Uh, I was hoping there'd be more people here tonight that wanted to speak on the issue that I want to bring up. When the high school was built and we first occupied it in 69, and, no, 68, 69, there was no way to get from Route 60 to Valley View except going downtown or going to South Street and across the up River Road. Big problem was going to school. I'd be caught by the train, sometimes both places. Uh, buses oftentimes would be late because of that. So when the school board bought the Haber property to build the Santa Way Middle School, uh, it was their intent to have school driveway connect the two schools. Um, in fact, if you look at the drawings at the south end, one of those ways uh, was supposed to be for loading and unloading school buses, and the other one was for the school buses to turn around to get out. Well, <coughs> when they did open it up, there were lots of us, and I was on one of them because I own property on both sides of uh, town and wanted to be able to get over there quickly and easily. Well, the board felt, and they were right, it's a safety factor having the driveways open to the public. Uh, they were designed for that. Uh, there was no intention of that. They're narrow and they're curvy. Well, the board tried to close them. First, it's saying no longer use them. Well, people wouldn't pay attention to that. So the board decided to put up a gate. That was terrible, the way that people acted. Uh, they were going around the gate when the gates were closed uh, over the school lawn. So the board decided that they were going to put posts in. That made them even angrier. One night I was over here to a basketball game, and when the game was over, I started out and to pick up my car, and there was a uh, pickup truck on the school lawn with quite a few people there. And as I walked by, they were going to take those posts out. So I came back into the building, found an administrator, and told him what was going on. He said, I went to police. Well, they were here for the game, so they went out. I couldn't hear what was being said, but as I went to my car, the language was terrible. They were calling the police pigs and all other kinds of names. The school administrator, I think, going to crawl in the ground somewhere because for some reason or other, they thought it was a constitutional right to use the school driveway to connect. I agreed at the time. Finally, the board decided, okay, we'll take it down because it's too emotional. And there was no other connection. So the mayor at the time also, also taught, and he got together with both sides and said, let's see if we can't at least have a temporary um, driveway across until there's another way uh, to connect with Valley View. I didn't pay a whole lot of attention because I wasn't out there a lot when traffic uh, was heavy. Was a safety problem. When my boys were at the high school or middle school before that, we had better than 3,000 kids along that driveway. And again, I thought people would be reasonable. Now, when I heard about the uh, placement of the uh, play equipment at the new school, I thought, gee, I saw those 
drawings uh, I'm going to go over and look so I came over the afternoon at about one o'clock and uh, well I think got a point because it does come real close <clears throat> so I came on down to the uh, stadium parking lot to turn around and I had to sit there for a while while I was sitting less than five minutes there were at least a dozen if not more uh, cars going across the school's driveway. I waited, and uh, when I pulled out, somebody coming from Sanford Street almost crawled up my tailpipe behind me. And I looked, and the these limits 20 <coughs> miles an hour. I know he was going 40, at least, and I've had experience police officer when I was in college and my grandfather, my dad, and my brother were all career police officers. But anyway, he around me on double yellow lines. And I thought, ha, he's going to get stopped by the stoplight at 60. So I didn't increase my speed, but he was up there almost immediately. I pulled up behind him, put it in park, and was going to tell him, well, light changed and off he took. Then I got to thinking, I always bring my uh, papers for recycling over to the school uh, at least once if not more a month. And the last time I brought a load of papers, same thing. There were lots of cars and all of them were breaking the speed limit. School was in session. Aside from the fact that we have the school buildings, we've got all the playing fields. Uh, so even when school is not in session, people are using, overusing and misusing your driveway. And I'm sure many of you know. Yeah, uh, are you, are you, is your point trying to say that the playground is probably a little unsafe? Where is that? My first, when I first saw it, I thought maybe you could consider moving. But Later that's on. not our problem. The problem is the speed and the frequency of traffic. Now, when the board was having a real difficult time deciding whether they were going to let the public use it or not, a member of the board owned property between Valley View and Route 60 and offered a right of way from Holly View over to Route 60. Nobody could afford it. Well, it wasn't the school's responsibility, but the township, the county, the city could not afford it. So that didn't come. When we were studying the facilities, uh, the committee, which I was on for a better than a year, uh, talked about another connection with Rob Six. Right away, the architect said, oh, the state will never approve another, what I call a curb cut. I didn't believe it. So I had occasion to go to Ashland, visited um, State Highway Division Three for another reason. So I asked them, oh, I think I heard about that. So they got the material out and they looked and they said, look at all the driveways and roads and so on that comes in, we'll never approve another one. So that doesn't look like it is a possibility. In the meantime, the city did provide at least two other ways to get in and out. One is Devon Drive. And that's been open for quite a while, 25 years. So that is a way that they could go. Also, Maple View has been extended clear to uh, West River Road. That's another possibility. So what I'm suggesting for the board, you can't take action right now uh, of limiting that driveway or closing it. It's too much of an emotional thing. So what I would recommend is that the board set up a commission made up of the police chief, uh, the principals of the school buildings, probably the board, uh, residents of Valley View, residents of Route 60, do a traffic count first of all, 
and see how much that driveway, and it's not a street. If I hear somebody call that a street again, I'm going to spit nickels, I think. Tim, did we do a 12 Yeah, we did. We did. <clears throat> it is not a street. It's not a dedicated street. Now, when uh, Hobie Johnson was mayor, and this issue was hot in town, he went to, to the school officials and to the council and said, how about if we make a temporary use of the driveway? Uh, and the city agreed that they would maintain it, uh, plow the snow, uh, things of that nature, and then when there was another possibility, the school board could decide whether they were going to continue it as a thorough there or a private driveway. And by the way, it is private. I asked uh, legal advice, and they said, it's just like it would be somebody's driveway that you drove through their garage to get to the other side. Even though, you know, it's, it's yes, a public body, but it is, under the law, a private driveway. It's not big enough. It doesn't go the right places to be a thoroughfare. Now, since we're going to have all three schools very soon in close proximity, I would like to see the, the board consider what to do with that right away. Possibly a committee could study it. And first of all, let's do a traffic chart. One of those hoses across. Because when I sat there that day for less than five minutes, there were at least a dozen not going in and out of school, but from Sanford Street to 60, from 60 to That's a good, good idea. When I left uh, parking lot, there was somebody right on my table. Got it the right of way. He was going at least 40 mile an hour when he passed me. And across past me on a double yellow line. Our police can't expect to be here all the time. I know they're here before school in the morning and in the evening. Uh, I would suggest that the municipal court, if anybody is cited for speed in this rule zone, have their name, address, published at what the penalty is in the newspaper. So we know who these people are that misuse and endanger our children. Can you can you address this and Mr. Kempton during the week, give him a call? It's a great idea about establishing a commission to look at the traffic. And well, people seem to think on that, and you were in there too, that uh, the board makes all the decisions and they know everything about everything. No due respect, no you don't, and you can't expect to be. Mr. Pepin knows a lot of things. Others of us, of course, have observed. But I am very, very fearful. Uh, football games that I used to work. The band would come from the school building, come across the driveways, and people wouldn't stop for them. Same with two football teams, ours and our opponents. <laughs> yeah. I think we all share your concerns. We see the increased traffic and the, the speed and things going down the road. Uh, can you reach out to him maybe tomorrow? set up a meeting and talk about safety on Sailor Drive. Perhaps tomorrow. I'm, I'm going to have some surgery later in the week, but I'd be more than happy to put my two cents worth in. In fact, more than that, if I had known when my kids were in two schools involved, I would have insisted that they do something back there. And boards have discussed it a number of times. I think even the present board. But they know it's a hot potato. But those people have to understand the safety of our children is more important than you know, saving 10 minutes uh, to get from Valley View to Rock City State. So thank you see. for yeah. your attention. Um, I was hoping that there would be lots of people here tonight. They said they were coming. But uh, I want to hear what they have to say, too. Yeah, one thing they were addressing on the, on the social media side of the post was the concern of Place for the playground, and all of us share that concern. When we get into the superintendent's report, he's got some ideas on the, the playground placement. So if we will wasn't address that way, way, perhaps I, my very first impression was maybe they better move it. Where 
I don't see it. I have not walked the property, so I don't know where it could be put. He's, he's got some ideas in about good. 10 minutes we'll hit it. Good. But again, you have to think about the safety. Smith, you can call me and we'll talk during the week. There was one accident that I recall that I saw happen. It was after a high school dance and somebody was coming across Sailor Way, the dedicated street, and ran up the guy wire on uh, the electric pole. They were hurt when there was a lot of track uh, property damage. I don't know. Some have said there have been cl close calls on their own students. But you, the board, have provided sidewalks everywhere. Whatever happened to safety? Rather the school? I'm hoping that somebody will put them in on Sanford Street. Next summer. But it's coming. Yeah. Again, the safety of our kids. Mine are through. About six, four of you board members so were in school when I taught. Two of them were, got stuck in my classroom. Um, you're all my kids. And your kids and your grandkids. And they are our most sacred thing this community has. And to save a few minutes on having maybe go down across the church drive, because that goes to it. Uh, the property owner on previous uh, price of property owner on Douglas didn't allow cars to go by when he lived when you guys bought it. I think the city did put half the street in because there was a lawsuit. People didn't want the traffic in front of his house. Well, where's the school board having a lawsuit <laughs> against all the people that misuse it? Well, give Mr. Pepper a call. Well, let's get this up. I appreciate it. Though I've taken too much time. <laughs> okay. hot on this issue. Thanks, Mr. Smith. <clears throat> Anybody else have anything to address? Yes. Mark. Let's take your name. Rob Creek. Real quick. Terry would remind me of something that I've noticed. Um, the St. Bruce School, when it got placed down Route 60, and they had crosswalk signals at the intersection of Sarah Way and Route 60, maybe almost a year ago there was a traffic accident, took out one of the signal controls. So the, the crosswalk signals themselves, the one's missing in the southeast corner of the intersection. Right here by the yes. gas station? Yep, right across the street. Get it going. There's two quick uh, solutions, perhaps. I'll, I'll check with the <coughs> speed bumps. With the Vermillion police on that. We'll, we'll and then I noticed a number of things. cities. We have enough speed bumps on St. Louis Drive. Oh, I know. <laughs> they're there out. They're there already. Yeah. Uh, but they shouldn't be going over 30 miles an hour anyhow. And then something I've seen in downtowns of many cities is they have what looks like a cone, but it's a tall thing. It's fastened to the road, and it says, must stop with pedestrians and crosswalks. That is a possibility. I think it wouldn't cost much. I don't know if they can pay attention to it. All good ideas. Let's Thanks again. Thank you. Anybody else? That we move on to item number nine, which are reports and our superintendent's report. Okay, I'm going to start with the facility update and I'm just going to give you a quick idea of what's happening with the field house. Mr. Reaney supplied me with some bullet items tonight, so we're just going to do this very briefly because we have some other things on the agenda than an executive session to get to tonight. So it's just going to be a real brief update for facilities. We are on task and on target with the time line so far in the schedule for the field house. The topsoil was removed from the building pad. The building pa pad was then stabilized with some Portland cement. 12 inches of stone was placed and compacted on the pad to stabilize the soil after that. Footers have been laid out and excavation of the footers are scheduled to start on December 29th. Site utilities are ready to begin and the water line installation is scheduled to start on December 15th. The submittal process for all equipment and products are continuing. So Simonson is the contractor for the field house. Everything so far is on target and uh, the green space and the 
board so far is satisfied because those times are being met and everything is going well so far. The weather seems to be cooperating too, which is which has been good. So how much more do we have before we are we still in a weather sensitive stage of the field house? Are we yeah, we'll stay there all winter on this yeah. Okay. Just a real uh, quick, just a few comments about the uh, new facility. We're just working on the schedules with that. We've looked at a couple of uh, possibilities for uh, the substantial completion date on that, and we are not quite certain as to when that's going to happen at this point. We're, we're still working on that process, and I'll be updating the board, and being t uh, I'll, we'll be talking with the board as that progresses. So we're working with the architects, we're working with Green Space and RFC on that substantial completion date. We did talk a little bit about it at the last board meeting. We did say that there was going to be an extension of time needed. Fortunately, the elementary school teachers and the students are in a warm, safe, dry building over there. And so uh, there's that's being taken care of. So I'll let you know as that goes on. The other thing that we wanted to just talk about real quick as Mr. Dawson alluded to and Mr. Smith has come up to talk about is the playground. There have been some concerns from the public that the playground is too close to the road. And as you're coming around the bend down Sailor Way Drive, there's the curve right there. And when the site was first designed, of course everything is done on paper and architects consult with the board and we talk about this but until it really gets laid out it's really hard to visualize and what's happened here as the playground has been put in and as we've seen it and the community has seen it we do have some concerns and so we've talked with the architects about the possibilities of what we can do to rectify the situation and a couple alternatives include putting a high-speed rail guardrail that we have talked with the city that they might be interested in, might be willing to put up to help to not just help but to stop any car or truck that would be coming through that area and not be able to hold the road and that high speed guardrail would hold them back. Another alternative that we're looking at is to sink some ballards down into the curbs and into the property. And that would be a steel ballard that would do the same thing, but just have a little bit of a different visual look than the guardrail. So that's an option. Another option would be behind the ballards to put some boulders. That's another option. So we're looking at several different options. Quite honestly, another option that the board is thinking about is we have some playground equipment that's still left over at South Street that most likely will not be used totally over there. We wouldn't be taking it all, but we were looking at the northeast corner of the property, and I've got some drawings here that I'll pass out to the board, and then I've got a larger drawing that I'll put up here in just a moment so that you can visualize what we could possibly propose to the board that we could look at as an option. I'm gonna pass these over, and you can just pass them through the audience, and you can get smaller look at what it looks like. I think some of the concern that I, I've heard from people in the community were not only the, the safety from the, the road, but also the limited Sorry. playground area and some concern over the location of the swale in relation to where the playground is. Right. So I think you take the speed safe, the road safety issue, and the swale in the limited area to one around, I think we need to seriously look at relocating that to that northeast corner. I, I think the thought that Correct me if I'm wrong, but the thought would not be to actually move that playground. We would keep that playground in place. Then we would also take some of the equipment that's over at South Street, and there's plenty of equipment still left over there, and it would be placed in this northeast area, and we could do the labor with our staff here to remove that playground, but one of the things that we can't do is to reinstall it. You need certified playground installers to put the playground back up in its place or put some of that equipment back up in its place. So as Mr. Dawson did say about the pleasant, about the present playground in that area is there is a swale. The swale is not finished yet though at this point. There's soil that's put down in there. There's still some more fill. 
it's not going to have quite the, the, the depth that you're looking at right now. If you look at it now, there's about a four foot, maybe a little bit more than a four foot drop. I think it's designed to be a four foot drop and then there's going to be some fill to be put in that area. And the idea could be that we use this playground primarily on good weather days and dry days and not use it at all when it's going to be wet or the road conditions are poor. We can then take the kids over to this playground and let them play on this playground if the school and the students and the teachers are concerned about the weather. So that would give us a possible option. So in addition to um, worrying about the safety concerns of a car going off the road or something like that, one of the things we talked about, and I just want to reiterate again, is that playground near the street was to be fenced in as well. That it would prevent, prevent a child from getting too close to the road. Right. It does have a fence, and thanks for reminding me so, about that, Mr. Hayden. I, I did mention that, that there is a fence. So we're looking at multiple possibilities. We, we're all, as you've seen, we put around the district some telephone poles with some roping. That's another option. We can put some telephone poles, the boulders, the fence. We could put a guardrail there, a high-speed guardrail and boulders there. I mean, that would really reinforce it. And we're not talking about just small rocks. We're talking about massive boulders that could hold that back. I, I think you still have a concern over space for kids just to play kickball or run around. So I, I don't think it's not going to cost us that much to move the equipment from BES to then more of these corner so there's some options. And we could save on the labor, as I said, of taking some of that equipment that's out already at South Street and moving it back to, to that location. So could we get a proposal with some cost estimates to relocate that and create a just just so you know without it, the full estimate to take some of that equipment out was eleven thousand dollars and that was take it out install it mulch it do everything with no none of our labor involved i'm imagining we should be able to cut some of that and cut that by at least 40 percent okay but we may have some of that money left over in the project at this point, there's $96,000 left in contingency money. We're tight, very tight with the money, and we'll talk about that, I'm sure, this evening. So we've got all spring to let that play out. Yes. Okay. okay, so any more questions, any comments on that? Okay, the last item that I had on my report was a athletic director update as you know at the last meeting we've been talking about the selection of an athletic director mr brickner is retiring in june of this year we formed a committee we've been working on the committee for the last month or so it's difficult to coordinate everyone's schedule when you try to bring candidates in to get get them all scheduled but we are down to the final two candidates and we're very happy with the quality of the candidates that we have. Uh, we're just finalizing some reference checks on the candidates. We're talking amongst our team members, making sure that we're happy with the final selection and the plan would be to bring that candidate uh, to the board for a final recommendation at the next board meeting. Any questions on that? Okay, that's all I have. Move on to uh, item B, Treasurer's Report. Um, sure. Recommend a resolution to approve the following fundraisers for policy 5830. National Honor Society, Ewok, December 18. National Honor Society of Vermont and Fears Wristbands, December 9th through May 29th. National Honor Society Teacher Luncheon, December through May. And prompt a Dawn request to amend their original fundraiser form to show the cost for 50-50 raffle tickets will be reduced to $10 per ticket. I'll move a second. Any discussion? Follow up. Mr. Hickman? Yes. Mr. Dawson? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. Okay, then. With that, we'll move to item number 10, discussion items. Do we have anything to discussion items? Okay. 
We will move on to item 11, which is the consent agenda. Superintendent Treasurer recommended the Board of Education approve the consent agenda items. Action by the Board of Education and adoption of the consent agenda means that all items are adopted by one single motion unless a member of the board, the treasurer, or the superintendent requests that any such item be removed from the consent agenda and voted upon separately. Um, I'm going to uh, note that everything is listed. Um, is there anything we want to pull off? But I will move to approve the uh, consent agenda. I'll second. Any discussion? Call the roll. Mr. Dawson? Yes. Mr. Haberman? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mrs. Simmons? Yes. Okay, we have nothing pulled off the consent agenda. We will move on to our um, second public participation session. Is there anybody that wishes to speak again? Okay. Move on to um, item 14 on the addendum, and that is a, uh, a recommended resolution to move into executive session for the purpose of consultation with the board's attorney to discuss matters which are subject to pending or imminent court action. I move. move. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Haberman? Yes. Mr. Dawson? Yes. Mr. Harding? Yes. Mrs. Yes. 